My name is Logan Dubill, and you are watching Campus Reform. Today, I am honored to be joined by Troy University's Alan Mendenhall. Mendenhall is currently a professor within the school's College of Business, and on top of his teaching responsibilities, he recently announced a new program that aims to combat wokeism in corporate America. Curious to tell us more, Professor Mendenhall, thank you so much for joining me. Logan, thank you for having me to highlight this really important initiative, which is only a small effort and what needs to be a much bigger movement. Of course. So let's just jump right into this. Why did you decide to launch the program and what does it aim to cover? Well, there are two pieces to it, I guess, and, and conceptually, which is uh, the one is that we're we're trying to highlight corporate wokeness and go after corporate wokeness. But the other side of that is that we want to teach principled entrepreneurship and, and sound business ethics. We want to teach students that profits are good and that businesses add value to society by producing goods and services, creating jobs, innovating, and making our lives easier and better. Um, wokeness actually leads to unethical business practices and, and harms more people than it helps in society. And so we want to assign readings uh, where we'll have uh, reading groups and we will have outside speakers who come in. Our students may take some field trips, but uh, we are going to explore this issue of corporate wokeness and what it means for society writ large and how it plays on um, questions of business ethics. So you obviously, as a business professor, do have experience within the world of business. Can you kind of list off and tell me some instances of corporate wokeism that you've experienced personally? Well, so I, I have kind of an odd case. I am a lawyer with a PhD in English who has somehow found himself in administration in a business school. So I'm a little bit of an odd duck. But if you look at corporate wokeness and you're looking for examples of it, you don't really have to go very far. Um, I think we, we, we've, we've just seen an announcement this week about the NASDAQ screening companies based on diversity, equity, inclusion. Uh, we have asset management companies that are investing state pension money and, and getting really wealthy off of investing state pension monies, but they're doing so uh, in funds where they've screened out um, uh, so-called companies that are unfriendly to uh, ESG, which is environmental, social, and governments criteria. And... Um, and that is a, a tremendous problem because you've got these huge asset management companies investing other people's money in underperforming funds. And that's a breach of fiduciary duty. That's, that's highly problematic. Um, Bank of America just, I guess, maybe last week announced this, uh, a new community affordable loan solution program. And it's a uh, relaxed lending standards so they're going to qualify people for home ownership who otherwise wouldn't qualify. Um, and they're doing it purportedly to help minority communities, to help people in cities with high concentration of African-American populations or Hispanic populations. But uh, they're going to give these loans without requiring a down payment, without requiring closing costs on the mortgage, without uh, requiring a minimum credit score, without requiring mortgage insurance. And there are uh, there there used to be a term for something like this, and it was called predatory lending. This was something where you're getting people on the hook, people who wouldn't otherwise qualify, and then they sign their life away to you. Um, but now we call it wokeness. We call it social justice. And all this is going to do is hurt the very com communities that it purports to help. This will just um, this will just hurt African American and minority communities. And by the way, this type of lending is what played a role in the 2008 financial crisis. And did the 2008 financial crisis, did that did that help poor people in minority communities? No. So Bank of America is basically using Black people, using Hispanics for advertising and marketing purposes while, in the end of the day, hurting them. And so that's another thing we would like to highlight is different ways in which corporations purport to be these social justice warriors, but really they're just signaling or they're distracting consumers from the bad things they're actually doing. I mean, one thing you can do as a corporation to turn people's attention away from bad things you're doing, whether it's hazardous working conditions or whether it's, uh, you know, if you think, if you want to distract from executive compensation or these things that the left likes to latch onto, well, you can distract the left by saying, well, we're going to do this green stuff and we're going to do that. And you actually don't have to do anything because there's nothing that monitors these things or ranks these things. And uh, and the left says, oh, yeah, that's a good corporation. We could do that. And then the corporation can do whatever it wants. So a lot of this is just disingenuous signaling on the part of corporations. 
It, d- it definitely does sound like wokeism is taking a negative toll on the world of business. Uh, do you know as of now how many students have signed up for the program? Yes, we have a modest 10 students to start with. So it's, uh, it's a small operation. We, uh, we are beginning with just modest funding. We're actually using money that we have within our budget already, but hoping to raise money over the course of this year so that uh, next year we can add more students, we can do more things, and, uh, and really develop the program into something that uh, can become a robust force for good. And, you know, combating wokeism, that's kind of going against the liberal narrative. Uh, This being the case, have you experienced any backlash from students or even some of your peers at Troy University? Not necessarily. I know not everybody agrees with what we're doing. And uh, I've gotten some funny looks in the hallways and on out in the quad by some some faculty. But I think for the most part, the administrative the administration has been supportive of this project. And I'm very grateful for that. Um, and uh, I, I think that we will not face um, many obstacles, at least in the, the uh, initial year. Now, if we keep growing and we keep getting bigger and stronger, well, the left is going to try to come after this with its own um, narratives, and I suspect we'll see opposition eventually, but uh, right now, we're just going about our business. We're just mild-mannered professors, you know, uh, trying to explore an issue and uh, expose students to some concepts that they don't get in other classes. I kind of want to get more into what you would contribute or what you think causes wokeism in corporate America. Uh, Here at the Leadership Institute's campus reform, our student journalists are consistently covering wokeism in higher education. Uh, Would you contribute that wokeism to then transferring over to the corporate world? Absolutely. I think everything emanates from the universities. I think that's where wokeism starts. Now, why companies go woke, it's a different, um, you know, that's a different story. Uh, I already suggested that there are ways that corporations feel as if they can get off the hook or disguise their wrongdoing by marketing themselves as woke. Um, But there are also other things to think about, like CEOs uh, need cover these days that, you know, CEOs don't stick with companies for long, long periods of time the way they used to. Um, So a CEO may only be with the company for, say, five years. And one way a CEO can can demonstrate success is by redefining success. So traditionally corporations, the purpose of corporations was to maximize profits for shareholders. And that was a pretty pretty easy measure. You just say, okay, are we we generating profits? Yes, okay, great, we're doing the right thing. But now that under the G, under the governance structure of ESG, now that we're redefining things from uh, shareholder to stakeholder and basically a stakeholder form of government says, all of society is a stakeholder, the environment's a stakeholder, all these are stakeholders. Well, then you could say, well, are we, are we um, doing good things for the stakeholders? Are we, are we helping the environment? Are we um, making sure we're uh, o- open to LGBTQ people? Are we uh, diversifying our board of directors? Um, are we uh, opposing gun control? Whatever it is, well, that's a lot easier to do than make profits. And so a company could be losing profits and by the old model be failing and not be successful, but CEOs are able to redefine success and say, well, actually the purpose of our corporation is to, is, is under the stakeholder governments to, to appeal to the stakeholders and, and to, to, to maximize um, the benefits to, to stakeholders and minimize risk, risk to stakeholders, which means we are, we're helping the environment. We're doing all these good things. We may not be making money, but we're succeeding as a corporation because we're doing all this great stuff. So CEOs can get away with that. And then after five years, they can leave and jump onto the next job. And they've left a wake of destruction at this prior company, even though they've portrayed themselves as being successful because they've done all these sort of social social justice things. So you think diversity, equity, and inclusion-based initiatives are so easy to implement, and this is kind of why corporate America is starting to take that route over, you know, profiting or expanding financially? Yeah, I think a lot of CEOs will uh, sort of um, delegate. They'll punt on DEI because it's a lot of pressure to have to deal with a controversial issue as a CEO, and the CEO can say, well, look, I'm not the expert 
and diversity, equity, inclusion. So I'm going to hire a bunch of consultants and these consultants are going to come in and these programs are going to be instituted by middle managers. And this is a way that the CEO can, again, give himself or herself cover and say, well, look, I, I wasn't the expert here. So I listened to the experts and the experts suggested that we needed to do X, Y, and Z for our company. And so I just followed their advice and that's what we did. And that way the CEOs can sort of get off the hook without having to take any kind of controversial stand one way or the other. Thank you for going more into depth about that. I have one final question for you. Do you have any advice for students out there who are looking to enter the business field? Well, I've got a piece of advice. This is actually, oh, do I have it here? This is, this, this is from a Barry Weiss article. This isn't a piece of advice about business, but Barry Weiss wrote this article in Commentary Magazine, and it's called, We Got Here Because of Cowardice, We Get Out With Courage. And it says, uh, the subtitle is Say No to the Woke Revolution. And the, the, the closing lines, to me, are what should be the advice. And bear with me while I just read these, these last few lines. Barry Weiss says, in an age of lies, telling the truth is high risk. It comes with a cost, but it is our moral obligation. It is our duty to resist the crowd in this age of mob thinking. Uh, it is our duty to think freely in an age of conformity. It is our duty to speak truth in an age of lies. This bravery isn't the last or only step in opposing this revolution. It's just the first. After that, we, after that must come honest assessments of why America was vulnerable to start with and an aggressive commitment to rebuilding the economy and society in ways that once again offer life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness to the greatest number of Americans. But let's start with a little courage. Courage means, first off, the unqualified rejection of lies. Do not speak untruths, either about yourself or anyone else, no matter the comfort offered by the mob. And do not genially accept the lies told to you. If possible, be vocal in rejecting claims you know to be false. Courage can be contagious, and your example may serve as a means of transmission. So yes, my advice would be echoing Barry Weiss, be, be courageous. Don't be afraid of the mob. If you know something is not true and not right, call it out. There will be consequences. But if people don't start doing this, we are on a slippery slope and we won't be able to come back. Very, very powerful. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Professor Mendenhall, thank you again for joining me. My name is Logan Dubill with Campus Reform. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe to our channel for future content.